For more than 20 years, the ISS has served as a continuously inhabited foothold in low Earth orbit, a way for space agencies around the world to study how humans live off the Earth for extended periods. The program has been such a profound tool of diplomacy, as well as science and engineering, that many in the space company think it should be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. At the very least, they think the life of the ISS should be extended. Late last year, the White House backed NASA's plan to keep the ISS operating until 2030, but it's not clear that the station will last that long. In recent years, it has sprung a series of leaks that has been rattled by errant thruster firings that have sent it spinning wildly. Despite its incredible durability, it can't survive in the harsh vacuum of space forever. The extreme hot and cold temperatures take their toll, so the bits of micrometeorite debris that the space station dodges a few times a year occasionally get hit. At some point, it'll reach the end of its life. Knowing that day may come soon, NASA is racing to find its successor, but the space agency won't be building it. Instead, it's looking to the private sector to develop next-generation habitats that would be owned and operated by the companies, not NASA. This not only enables NASA to manage multiple space stations, but also stimulates competition among private companies to establish their presence in space, harnessing the economic potential of low-Earth orbit. The first one on the list is Starship. NASA has joined forces with SpaceX to forge ahead with the creation of Starship space stations. These Starships boast a capacity surpassing that of the International Space Station and share a size resemblance with the external fuel tank of the previous space shuttle. Interestingly, many space station proposals drew inspiration from the external fuel tank's design. The construction process is poised to be more streamlined with the use of SpaceX's Starships, thanks to their adaptable steel framework that facilitates welding, cutting, and modifications. The transformative potential of SpaceX's Starships extend to astronaut support. Calculations regarding space radiation propose that orbits below approximately 500 kilometers situated near the equator exhibit such minimal radiation levels that little to no radiation shielding would be necessary. Imagine a colossal wheel formed by a fleet of SpaceX starships, capable of rotation to simulate gravity, positioned strategically to ensure safe radiation levels. The ample interior volume of these space stations allows for the efficient arrangement of supplies around the hull to augment radiation protection. By utilizing a one meter thick shield, the space required for shielding would fill the entirety of a small capsule. Yet within a 900 cubic meter volume, 90% of the interior space would remain even after allocating space for one meter of shielding. Considering a cost of 20 million each, 50 starships would amount to just $1 billion. Within this budget, accommodations for 350 people can be realized following the standards of the ISS. Notably, while the International Space Station was initially designed for a crew of seven, each starship can comfortably house a similar number, with the potential to expand the host up to 450 occupants. In 2009, the ISS made history with a nine-person occupancy during a transition. It's worth highlighting that the ISS incurred an expenditure of about $100 billion whereas the conception of a significantly larger Starship station, boasting a volume of a hundredfold, could come to fruition at an estimated cost of approximately $2 billion. If this works, this is definitely a masterpiece of space technology. Ranking second on NASA's list of commercial space stations is the station created by Axiom Space. NASA selected Axiom Space in January 2020 to design and develop the initial commercial modules to attach to the ISS. Recently, the Houston-based company achieved a milestone by coordinating with NASA to deliver a multi-purpose logistics module to the company's worksite in Houston for evaluation as a potential future Axiom Station module. The timeline for the construction and launches of Axiom Space Station presents an ambitious and exciting roadmap. With a projected launch date in 2026, Axiom is poised to usher in the next era of space habitation in the coming years. Axiom's vision encompasses not only a space hotel with artificial gravity, a high-tech research lab, and a launching pad for deep space exploration, but also an ethos of fostering multi-directional freedom. The design is marked by an egg-like structure, a comfortable and friendly egg, which would feature materials and colors stemming from a fetal universe. The walls are sprinkled with hundreds of nano-LEDs with changing colors as a continuation of the view of the universe through the large windows. Just as all the shades of lights and colors of day and night, the egg 
will also live to the mood and biorhythm of its osmotic inhabitant. Axiom is further favored by NASA with exclusive agreements for connections to the ISS, obtaining additional data to support the inception of the first modules within all NASA contracted space stations. The third space station that NASA has signed a contract with in June of this year is none other than the commercial space station Haven 1 and Vast 1, designed by a newly established private company, Vast, a pioneer in space habitation technologies. Under this agreement, VAST will collaborate with NASA on technologies and operations required for its microgravity and artificial gravity stations. This includes the Haven 1 commercial destination, which will provide a macrogravity environment for crew, research, and in-space manufacturing and the first crewed mission called VAST 1 to the platform. Haven 1 is the module, 10.1 meters long and 3.8 meters in diameter, sized to fit inside a standard Falcon 9 payload fairing. The 14-ton module provides 70 cubic meters of pressurized volume and 15 kilowatts of power. It has a docking port at one end and a large window at the other. The company also plans to build a much larger space station consisting of modules launched by the SpaceX Starship. The large space station will be 100 meters long, consisting of modules 7 meters in diameter. It will be capable of sustaining 40 people and will spin to create artificial gravity. NASA, meanwhile, will provide VAST with technical expertise, assessment, lessons learned, technologies, and data to support their development of new commercial spaceflight technologies. Next is Lunar Gateway. Unlike its predecessors, this space station is designed to be stationed in lunar orbit, bridging the gap between Earth and the Moon. Its primary function revolves around facilitating seamless transfers between spacecraft, establishing a hub for astronauts and researchers to embark on deep space missions. At the heart of the Lunar Gateway's missions lies a focus on a groundbreaking research that promises to expand our understanding of space and the cosmos. Scientists on board will delve into diverse studies ranging from space weather analysis to radiation exposure experiments. This will enable us to better comprehend the challenges posed by the harsh environment of outer space and provide insights crucial for long-duration missions to the Moon and beyond. The components and launch plan of the Lunar Gateway have been meticulously planned. The Power Propulsion Element, PPE, and the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, HALO, are scheduled to be launched via a Falcon Heavy rocket by SpaceX in the coming years. Once these initial components are ready, the Gateway will be prepared to welcome the first crew of Artemis IV around late 2026. It'll have certain similarities with the International Space Station, such as a couple of for the crew to enjoy the view and exercise. The Lunar Gateway will follow an elliptical orbit, meaning will approach the Moon at about 10,000 kilometers and then move out to around 70,000. This positioning offers a vantage point for observing celestial phenomena and harnessing solar energy, creating an opportunity for innovative scientific pursuits. However, due to this distance, the Lunar Gateway is positioned far from the Earth's protective atmosphere and magnetic field which shields humans from space weather and radiation. This unique environment presents challenges in terms of human health and the durability of equipment. Another upcoming commercial destination in low Earth orbit is the Starlab space station. This station, a collaborative effort between Lockheed Martin, Voyager Space, and more recently Airbus Defense, a major private agency in Europe, is poised to become a prominent fixture in the cosmos. The core components of the Starlab space station comprise a spacious inflatable habitat meticulously crafted by Lockheed Martin. However, with the entry of Airbus into the equation, they'll take on the responsibility of constructing the primary habitation module for the Starlab space station, supplanting Lockheed Martin in this crucial role. Lockheed Martin originally was to have built an inflatable pressurized habitat for the Starlab space station, similar to the expandable modules once developed by the now defunct Bigelow airspace the Airbus-built module will be metallic and rigid in form. The redesign of the metallic module will result in a quicker development schedule and lower costs. The metallic habitat will be similar to those that already make up the International Space Station. Besides these components are other essential elements, such as a metallic docking node, a power and propulsion element, a large robotic arm for servicing cargo and payloads, and a state-of-the-art laboratory system to coast a comprehensive research, science, and manufacturing capability. Starlab will be able to continuously host up to four astronauts for conducting critical science and research. Voyager says the Starlab station could be ready for launch in 2028. 
the entire station will launch on a single heavy lift rocket. They said the Starlab team will announce a launch provider for the space station in the next time. After NanoRax and Lockheed Martin had made their own commercial space station, Jeff Bezos threw his hat in the ring. In December 2021, NASA awarded Jeff Bezos' company, Blue Origin, $130 million to develop their own design for a commercial space station. Blue Origin's Orbital Reef is a proposed space station aimed at greater accessibility and inclusivity. In collaboration with Blue Origin, the aerospace company Sierra Space is jointly developing the space station. At its core, the Blue Origin Orbital Reef envisions a luxurious space hotel concept that redefines the paradigms of travel and accommodation. With accommodations for up to 400 guests, this proposed orbital hotel offers an unprecedented opportunity for space tourists. It has office spaces that employees can work in, rooms for them to sleep in after a day's work, halls to laze about or sit as they snack on their hearty packed meals, and outer space greenery to still enjoy nature while outside of Earth. Moreover, Orbital Reef also opens its doors to research facilities equipped with machinery and technology to support researchers and developers in their space exploration endeavors. But how can people be flown there in the first place? Sierra Space and Blue Origin have thought ahead of this question and are underway to produce their hypersonic space plane Dream Chaser as Orbital Reef's buddy. This space plane is being developed as a multi-mission vehicle capable of supporting the Low Earth Orbit project. Let's hope this innovative space station concept maintains its efficiency, similar to the swift delivery of Amazon's online orders, rather than encountering the stagnation that Blue Origin's rocket plants faced. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.